and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic for a slightly unusual episode today. I'm going to give you some tips on uh, how to deal with a Sudoku competition, how to compete um, at Sudoku and explain something about what's going on in Sudoku competitions. So in the last two weekends, um, as we have trailed on the channel, uh, there have been two online Sudoku competitions. One was the first round of the WPF's Sudoku Grand Prix, which goes for eight rounds, one approximately every month for the first part of the year. And the first round was a week ago. So I had a go at that. Um, my results were not fabulous, to be honest. So this was the official results list. It goes down, what, 685 entrants? In fact, 685 scoring entrants. So uh, there were probably over 700 giving the competition a go. Uh, yes, I was in the top half at least, but I did not come in the top 100. I was 109th. There I am, Mark Goodliffe. Nine puzzles completed. That was out of a possible 13. Um, and the puzzles are scored individually. So I'll show you in a moment on the next Sudoku test how that works. I mean, my sincere congratulations go to, uh, well, the, these top three are absolute luminaries in the world of uh, speed solving. And you can see from this that the top two, Kotamar Inishi and uh, Tan Tan Dai, were finished in under an hour for a 90 minute test in which I got nine of the 13 puzzles done. So, you know, that wasn't my worst ever performance. I, I would hope to have done slightly better. And um, yes, the test amusingly was out of 600 points. But as you can see, 18 people got more than that because there are bonus points for finishing the full test early and um, handing it in early. So you want, if you achieve that, I don't think I ever have. You click the uh, bonus points button and they're awarded to you. Now you have to be sure that you've marked, you've done everything right, that you've submitted the right solutions. So that's, uh, but this is really high end stuff. I mean, these these other names, you'll recognize some of them from the channel, obviously. Uh, Bastien Vialjame, Prasanna Sashadri, they compile some of the best puzzles we, we do on the channel. I mean, they're really epic solvers as well. So, um, you know, there's no shame to be beaten by the probably the top 50, 60 here. They're, they're really good solvers. There's uh, Tom Collier in the UK, one of our best solvers. Oh, actually, Jeremy Kong. I don't I don't know him, but he's done stunningly well. Sam Kappelman lines. I always look for the UK names because to, some, to some extent, I feel I'm competing against them. But some fabulous performances. Um, yes, out of 600, I was just going to check how many did I get? Uh, just 336, so only just over the half marks, um, and you can get more than full marks. So not brilliant. You know, I was happy enough to get nine puzzles done, but I wasted a bit of time on the hardest puzzle in the test. Now let's flick to the next test. So last weekend was the German Sudoku qualifier, which really exists for, um, let me just put it more in the center of the screen, for the a qualification for the German team. Um, I'm not sure if there's another round for those who do well in this, but you can see uh, Jonas Gleim, who's uh, set many of the puzzles we've solved on the channel as well, right up there amongst the absolute best Germans. But this is the German list only you can, because they are qualifying for their national tournament. But it was also open to international competitors. And for once, I did incredibly well for me. I came in 15th here. Now, I mean, I can't hope to touch these people at the top end. Again, Jakob and Druszek, uh, Hideaki Joe, Ken Endo, they're fantastic competitors. Uh, they finished, what was their time? One hour 43, one hour 44, one hour 55. This was a two hour test this time, slightly different. Um, but as you can see, I got uh, 14 of the 16 puzzles done in the time. And I, I, as I say, I was very pleased with that. I actually finished ahead of some very notable names who would normally hand me my hat in a competition. But uh, amazingly, I finished ahead of some of these guys with really good records. So I was very pleased with that. I think there's only 
88 odd international competitors in that. But uh, so I thought we'd have a very quick look at the test and how I would look about look at going about it. So my first tip is always preparation. These tests always have an instruction booklet that you can go through before trying the test. There's an example of every puzzle type that'll come up and you can test solve those um, and get yourself familiar, especially with puzzle types that you haven't seen before. And I mean, it really is, you're, you're allowed, you know, you get that a full week before the competition normally and as much time as you like to prepare for that. Now, I have to admit, I don't spend as long as one could preparing for these, partly because I'm very busy with the channel and partly because I have seen most of the puzzle types before. So I kind of feel I don't need to prepare that much, which is me being lazy. Now, the second, possibly the most important tip is to play to your strengths. If you're good at classic Sudokus, well, there's normally a few in a test. So in this one, they call them standard here, but there were four standard Sudokus in the in the test, including a 59 pointer. And uh, that's a good idea. If you don't like classic Sudokus and you think you're better at variants, well, there's always a good selection of variants. So here we had a Sudokube, which you had to look at in three different ways. Extra Regions, anti Knight, very familiar from the channel. Killer Sudoku, of course, one of the main variants. Um, and I'd be fairly happy with all of those. Now, one tip is on Killer Sudoku, if there is, they're very rarely easy point Killer Sudokus. They're normally medium range or high end. The high end Killer Sudokus are monstrously hard. So be careful with those. This one, 60 points in a test in which the highest puzzle got 105. So kind of mid range, probably quite doable. And, and certainly I found it so during the competition. Then there was a confetti Sudoku, which I haven't come across before. Um, all neighboring digits with differences A, B and C have been marked with a white, gray or black dot. A, B and C have different values and finding these values is part of the puzzle. I've never tried one like that before. So I passed over that when I was solving went on to the diagonal, a thermo, again, fairly familiar types. Ah, and then we got to position sums. And this is the type that I solved one of the practice puzzles before the competition. Um, and they, Christoph Seliger remarked that there are very few extant examples of position sums Sudoku. So it was a very interesting, I think I have done four of the five puzzles he named. So I have almost as much experience with position sums as anyone. So I certainly fancied my chance of picking up 69 points with that one. And then there was an irregular, an average arrow, and a German whispers at the end. And again, with German whispers, I have solved many of the examples that exist of German whispers. I've created a German whispers puzzle. So I thought I would have a decent chance, even though it's the hardest puzzle in the test, 105 points. Uh, it was also the one my printer printed first because it was at the end of the competition. Therefore, I was getting on with that while the printer was churning out the other puzzles. Um, and what that meant is that the two I left alone were Average Arrow Sudoku and... Um, Irregular Sudoku. And I know regarding my strengths that these are puzzles that take a long time. I can get through them, but there's nothing easy for me in one of those. So I left them alone in case I would have time at the end of the competition. Now, my third tip is be prepared to bifurcate. Some of these puzzles, especially the mid range ones, you will finish faster. If you're prepared to give it a go one way and unwind that if it doesn't work, because otherwise you can sit there looking for the perfect logical route. And those logicians amongst you who only watch um, for the pure logical routes and um, enjoy it when Simon waits and waits and spots those won't believe in this. But if you want points in this sort of competition, very occasionally at least and very often at most, you have to be prepared to do some guessing, make an assumption, be prepared to revise it. But I didn't actually do it much in this test, to be honest, maybe on one or two puzzles only. And then the fourth tip is about time management. 
first of all, be aware of the clock and how fast it's ticking, how long you have left how long it will take you to enter the answer strings. As you can see, you always have to enter um, a couple of the rows or columns of the puzzle to prove that you've done it. You don't have to enter the whole grid because that would take ages, but you do have to enter 18 digits. Um, and you need to leave yourself some time or enter each puzzle as you go along to make sure that you've got those submitted before the time runs out nothing more frustrating than to have solved a puzzle and not have proved it when the time's up. Now, the, the extra tip about time management is when you're coming towards the end of the test, say the last 15 or 10 minutes, when you reach the end of a puzzle, make a very informed and careful decision about which puzzle to take on in the remaining time. So I got to the end of my 13th puzzle with and had entered them all with eight minutes left and I had to make a decision between the average arrow puzzle where the rules are that um, digits in circles are the averages of the digits along the arrows which it's not too bad once you get your head around it but it's a big shift from the normal way of thinking this irregular Sudoku, which I will have a go at in a minute, um, which again, it's all just logic, but it's finding the right question at every moment and very hard to whip through those, I find. So in the end, I went back to that confetti Sudoku that I'd kind of passed over earlier on and thought, well, maybe I can get that done in eight minutes. Um, and I did. I got it done in seven and a half, which was just about perfect. There's always an absolute buzz if you finish a puzzle within the last minute and get it entered, just because you feel like you've managed your time perfectly. It's really a matter of luck. What you do have to sometimes do, if you've got, say, three or four minutes left and you've only made a certain amount of headway in a puzzle, then it might just be worth having a guess and proceeding, like especially if you've got a cell in which there's two possibilities well one possibility might lead you to a correct solution in the points and the other might not but you will get no points anyway if you spend so long pondering the logic that you can't actually achieve the puzzle so those are my tips for competition sudoku there is another competition coming up um the logic masters india sudoku mahabharat I'm not sure if it's round one, but there is definitely a 90 minute competition coming up this weekend. So do look on Logic Masters India. I think, again, anybody can enter. You may have to register with the site. Um, and if I get the time, I will de definitely be giving it a go because I was I was quite bucked by that performance, to be honest, in the German championship. Now. This is one of the puzzles I left alone in the championship. I am going to have a try now. You will probably see why um, why I don't do these competitively if I can avoid them, because um, I suspect it won't be all that fast. So finally, after 13 and a half minutes of tips, <laughs> let's get cracking. Um, so where do we go? Now, the rule here, by the way, is each row and column has one to nine and every box, every region has one to nine. Two of the regions are shaded and therefore this region is all one nine cell region. So that's all part of the rules. Now, there's a lot of geometry you can do always. So six and nine can't appear there. So they must in box, well, in this box, I was gonna call it box one, but that doesn't apply, be in those other cells. Um, ah, and where can seven be in column one? That seven is taking up all of these cells. So seven must be somewhere in one of those. Um, again, as I say, this really is about asking, finding the right questions to ask. Um, now, the geometry I was talking about, if you draw imaginary lines, it can help. So if I draw an imaginary line between column one and two, those cells are on the right side of it. Those cells are on the left side of it and in different boxes. They must be the same. You can see that because this region has five cells there 
the other four cells in the region are those, the other four cells in the column are those. So those sort of geometrical tricks can help. So I can see that those three cells must be the same as those, which doesn't help dramatically. It does mean that can't be the six, actually. Um, now, let's see, what else can I do? I should try, I mean, you can see now why I'm not particularly fast at these. Um, six. With an irregular, it may sometimes help just to find the digit that is most appears most amongst the givens. But here there's several that appear twice and a few that appear once. Um, five in this gray two shape can only appear in one of those two cells. Surprising. Ah, and we know that there's a five amongst here because of that rule I mentioned before. So that finally gives us a digit. We must have five here, not one here. Now. How can that help us? Not much. Yeah, I'm struggling to find anything really. A two must be in one of those. And a five actually in the top row must be in one of those two cells. Nine must be down there somewhere in that shape. That's restricting nine to a group of three cells there. The other nine in these columns must be in the one shape. So nine in this shape must be in one of those places. Ah, and I think that means one of these two is a nine. Yeah, it does. And that takes nine out of those two. Ooh. Now in this row, nine, I think, can only be in those two places. But I wish I knew which it was. Fortunately, it's not clear to me. Um, yeah, there's a big difference if that's a nine or one of those two is a nine. One of those two was a nine, that's a nine, then I know that's not, that is a nine. Mm, maybe, oh look, there's a nine there, so it doesn't actually resolve that problem, but it does keep nine in one of those two cells. Um, ah, therefore there's a nine in one of these two, and that's not a five, I thought I'd taken that out earlier. So one of those two is a nine. I know that one of those is a nine, so those aren't. The trouble is this one is so long and nine can appear anywhere in it. This to mean any of those cells can be a nine, which is which is frustrating. Um, and this is why I don't do these ones competitively as expected. So five maybe in one of those. I'm not sure I can use that yet. Have to be very careful with pencil marks here and make sure I know that they are confined within boxes and all or within regions. Also make sure I'm observing every number I've marked within a region. Otherwise they, they will just get out of control. So you will probably, if you concentrate, be able to pick up things that I can't see immediately. And it's literally just because in this sort of puzzle, you can't see everything. You can only see what you're actually looking for. Um, very tricky. 
twos. If that's there, in the three, two, yes, there must be a two in one of these cells for that shape. No, there's one up here, one there. Two in this shape must be down the left hand column. That's unfortunately a different sort of deduction, so it's not really advancing the cause. No, two's not proving very profitable. Ah, oh, oh, right, three in the one shape. That's the question I should have asked. That three and that three. Place it from the absolute beginning. Then there must be a three in this shape in the corner here. So that's been restricted to those cells. Now the three up in this shape is in one of those two. Threes are definitely the most profitable place to go. Given that there's one in those, all of these are ruled out, and that's a three. Um, three was the place to look, and I was not spotting that at all. Now, has that resolved anything? What about these remaining columns? Hmm. Those three shapes that I've got highlighted here still need three threes. Ah. So the three in this row, yeah, it's got to be in one of these two. So it is in that shape, in the two shape down here. Um, all of these remain possible as far as I can see. Oh, only those for the top two shapes, for the left hand most shapes. Ooh. I don't oh not that one though, so there must be ah there must be one up there, so that hasn't got one. So there's one up there, one there. Ah, this is not longer no longer possible. So the three in the right hand shape is there. That takes three out of those cells, puts the three in this bottom left shape there. That fixes three in the two shape. Now we can fix three up there. Now this seven nine is a pair, and we can take six out of there and definitely put it in that cell. Let's just remove the pencil marks because they will confuse me a bit later. Uh, now this is a one eight four triple now. Now we've got a little bit of traction. And now we know that three, one, four, and eight appear in these four cells. Well, I can see where the three appears. That is here. Four has to be in one of those. The eight has to be in one of those. And unfortunately, the one can be in any of them. Uh, that means these three are two, five, and seven. Um, and although this end one can't be five, I don't have much more information about that. But this has given me a one, four pair in this column. Two, three, eight. I've got nine, five, six, and seven to place. So that one's either nine or seven. In fact, I had marked this as a nine pair. I can now see it's a seven, nine pair because we have seven cleaned out of all of these cells as well. So seven, nine pair between those two. That means these two are five and six for the column. And I can fill those in. Pencil mark fives in the central box. That's seven. Oh, I should never have marked that as a seven, nine pair because the seven was a given, telling me which way round they were. This is now five and nine. I can fill them in. Let's get rid of those pencil mark nines. See if that, yeah, where does nine go in this row? It's now got to be here. That seven nine pair means it can't be in those cells. So that's good. How am I doing on this two shape? Nine, two, five, seven, three. Six must be in one of those two. These are from one, four, and eight. Quite self-visible. 
Right, six in row four. It's in one of those, but I can't really. Oh, no, it's not in that one. There's a six in its box already. So six is there. Four, five, that's one or eight. In fact, this must be nine. Maybe I should carry on with nines. That can't be nine. Nine in that shape is there. That can't be nine. Still two places there. Is this the only place for nine? Yes, in the bottom left shape. That fixes that. And this might be the last nine in the grid then. So now I'm going along okay. Now, um, ooh, now what should I be looking at? Five plus six, nine, three. Ah. Say so I'm going along okay, and that totally jinxes it. Two and seven must both be in that run of cells, along with one of one, four, eight. That's not fine. Um, ah, seven. That seven sees both of those. So seven's in one of those two. Not there. Now, where's seven in the one shape? It's got to be in one of those two. So it's not there. So that's the seven. Um, seven in this shape is in one of those two now. So you've got this, ah, oh, seven there, sorry. It's easy not to scan completely in this. And you probably take a lot of time if you do scan everything very carefully. It's all about the time. That seven makes this a two. Uh, five and seven there, yes, I can resolve those. So I've probably done all the sevens now. Just checking every row, yes. Now I've got two, four, and eight to place in this column. Five to put in the one shape. No, it can't be that yet. That's one or four. This is one, four, or eight. So is this actually. I don't think that can be a two either. No, no that's not eight. Nine, five, seven, eight, three. So these are from one, two, four, and six. I'm going to fill in the candidates. Um, in case it helps me in due course, let's remove the corner mark. Uh, choo, choo, choo. Come on, keep going. 3794R. Ah, I know this is a five because of that run. Um, five in this shape has to be here. Does that place five in the one shape? Yes, it does. That's now one or eight, and that makes a pair. So I've got a two six pair there as well. One and four to fill in down here. That gives me a one four pair there. This is two or six. Um, ah, the eight in the one shape is there. Then I've got a two four pair to go in. That fixes this is a one, this is a four, this is a one, that's a two. Um, this is a six, that's a four, so those markings did help considerably. Uh, so this is a six to complete the row. That's the six in the two shape now, which is coming along fine. This is either one or eight. So one of those is a four, so those aren't. That one is now a one, so that's where the four goes. This is an eight to complete the column. That fixes one, four, and one there. And you know, once we get going, it's fairly quick, but it's getting to that point that is the hard bit and scanning everything all the time as we go. So two and four there are resolved. This is the last in its column. That's one, four, or eight. Actually, it's one or eight. I still don't know which it is. Um, in this shape, that must be a one. That's two that's an eight that's a two this must be a one that's not a one this is a column wow still oh what am i not seeing that's an eight now so four and one are done four and eight are done that's an eight and should finish us off so there we go i mean about what, 15 minutes on the puzzle, maybe 16. And admittedly, 
I was talking while doing it, but um, still, I wouldn't have been far faster than that on my own. And therefore, it was a wise choice to avoid that with eight minutes to go in the competition. For me, the point value of that puzzle was not enough to justify the time spent doing it. Of course, other people have different preferences or are just quicker. Um, and my hat is absolutely off to people who finished that competition. So do have a look if you're interested in competitive Sudoku at the Logic Masters India puzzle coming up this weekend. Uh, uh, the Logic Masters India Sudoku Mahabharat uh, competition coming up this weekend. And we'll be back to something a bit more logical and normal tomorrow. See you then. Bye for now.